This is Bill Berry with an introductory orientation video for CSC 110, Introduction to Computer Programming with Python. There are several topics that we want to cover in this video since we don't have an in-person orientation session, which would have been nice, but since we don't, here is a way to get us started and to give you a little bit of a, sort of a personal introduction and welcome you to the course. Here are some of the topics that we're going to cover. First of all, we're going to look at expectations for online courses. They aren't for everyone, and so if you're going to be in an online course like this, what do you need to do? We'll look at the syllabus and schedule briefly, just to make sure you know what's there, what you're doing with those documents. We'll talk about course content and how this course's content fits in with the programming language series that are, that are available starting with here, going to CSC, or yeah, CSC 142, that is a Java course. We'll also look at the course website and <clears throat> talk a little bit about how that's going to work. Uh, we'll talk briefly about computer programming and what is a computer program. We'll also talk briefly about the Python language, what are some of the characteristics of the language, and then we'll look at some very specific things. We'll look at the tools that we're going to use and how to get started with those and write our first program. Last but not least, we'll have a little brief intro about your instructor, just so you have a sense of who I am and uh, sort of how I'll conduct the course, what my background is, things like that. So it should be plenty to talk about, and so let's just jump in. First of all, as I said, online courses aren't for everyone. Uh, programming courses particularly, uh, you, you'll really need to put in a lot of time and diligence on this course. Continuous investment would be the way I would describe it. The thing that I find that most people have trouble with with online courses is getting behind. If you get behind in the course and let work start stacking up, a lot of times you can never get out of that rut. So it's really important that you plan to make the investment. There's stuff due every week. You just need to invest continuously and you can't let up on that. You just have to plan to be there. So what are some of the things that you should do? Well, read the provided material, so the textbook, of course, but also the supplemental material will give you a lot of extra clues, some different perspectives. A lot of these materials are standard across all of the courses at North uh, for the CSC 110. No matter who teaches it, we'll, we'll use similar kinds of supplemental materials. There's also going to be some posted examples, so you'll want to read those, maybe copy and run them, play with them a little bit, understand those examples. Also, you'll want to do the weekly lab activities. There's some very short lab activities, just tiny little programs to work on and turn in. And also there's going to be a quiz, a multiple choice type quiz every week. So you'll need to be prepared to do that. You'll also be writing programs. So starting very soon, you'll have programs due. This needs to be your own code, your own work. You can ask for some guidance in terms of general hints, but you really need to do your own work and you need to understand all the code that you turn in None of the programs that are turned in will look exactly the same to me. They all have their own slight little differences, and yours needs to be your own. Also, we will have two exams. We'll have a closed book, written, midterm, and a final. So we'll meet together for that. If you're unable to take them at the scheduled times that are shown in the syllabus, you need to make arrangements with me, either to take them at the testing center at North, or if you are out of town, we'll need to make arrangements for you to take it uh, from some other play, at some other place, for instance, a Sylvan Learning Center, some sort of tutoring center, that I can make the agreement with them and then they can supply me the, the exams back after they've proctored the exam under my instructions. Uh, you may also choose to participate in the forum discussions. I'm not requiring these, but uh, it's a great idea that if you have issues, other people probably have them too. I ask that you don't post specific answers, like here's the code that does the thing you want to do, but some general stuff like here's a hint, here's a general direction that you might want to go that'll solve your problem. So those are some things to know about online courses. Now, in terms of the syllabus and the schedule, it's important that you get very well acquainted with these documents. And if you have any questions, please ask them. The syllabus is sort of a contract that expresses what you need to do for the course to be successful and what are the parameters that you should be aware of. So please do read these very carefully. And uh, basically, you'll see that uh, I've, I've emailed most of you this, but it's going to be in the course as well. So here's what the syllabus looks like. Here's a draft. It talks about participation, what textbooks, how the grading's going to work. It's important to understand that and ask questions. And then uh, talks a little bit about you know how the projects and exams etc are going to work. So please read that over. The last page of this is a schedule, and this will tell you what kind of reading you're going to need to do each week and what kind of work is due when the exams are etc. 
So um, also in the more updated version of the schedule, you're going to see the exam time posted, the exam dates and times and rooms. So you'll want to make sure that you can uh, get that you'll be available for those. <clears throat> so please read, the, please read those over carefully. A couple of things to point out. You do need a text, so you need to get that right away because work will be due starting soon. We'll be using Python. It's a free download, so you'll need to get that, install it, and be able to run it right away because, again, you'll have work due. One point is that if you stop participating in the class, I'm not going to do anything about that because I don't know whether you're just taking a break and we're going to try to catch up or not. So if you stop attending the class, I'm not going to drop you. If you're on financial aid, this can be a problem. So please do be aware you need to participate in the course or remove yourself from the course one way or another. Also, grades are composed as follows, 40% projects, 50% exams, and 10% labs and quizzes. Next, as I mentioned before, the work has to be your own. You can get hints, but you can't use anybody else's work. It's really important as you're studying programming that you know how to think through these things and do them on your own. So using other people's work doesn't really gain you anything in the long run. Also, a point is there's stuff due every week. So this week you're going to have labs and a quiz to take, and next week you're going to have a project due, and that's going to continue every week. So please be aware of that and be ready to, uh, you know, to, to participate right away in the course. So get your stuff, start reading, and get rolling. In terms of the course content, the thing that we want to do is talk about the fact that there's a three-course series that this course is a part of. This is the introductory course that kind of gets you rolling on programming. And then there's two college transfer courses starting with CSC 142. This course uses Python. Those courses will use Java. But the important thing is that this course uh, has certain goals to meet to fit properly in that series and prepare you for what you're going to find there and let you build on that in the future. So here are some things that we're going to cover. <clears throat> how you store data on the computer in your program using different types of data and constructing equations and expressions and things that will ex uh, express mathematically what you want to do. We're also going to talk about sequences of statements and how to do user input and output. So how do you ask the user for something and how do you tell the user something. We're also going to use selection structures. So how do, you, um, how do you use the if statement to make your program make choices for uh, based on data and do different things? We'll also talk about how you iterate or loop and look at the different kinds of loops that are available. And last, we'll talk about lists or arrays is the, the term that you'll hear in some other languages. So we'll cover all of those. And you want to walk out of this course with a pretty solid understanding of that thing. Files is another thing, how to do basic reading and writing from files. In terms of programming skills, what do you need to, to uh, bring to the table? What do you need to develop as we go here? Problem solving is really important. Given a problem, how do you, how do you uh, break it down and come up with a solution? Stepwise refinement. No program is right the first time, so how do you start small, do something, verify it, and then move on and build as you go? Testing and debugging is really important. I was a software tester by trade, as you'll learn later. Uh, it's really important that you know how to test and debug your own programs. Also, how to document your own code. So what kinds of internal documentation do you need uh, so that your program will be understandable to other people? Because we usually don't program in a vacuum. We often participate with others. So all of these things are important uh, building blocks that are laid down in this particular course. And I think we'll have fun while we're doing it. The next piece that we're going to talk about is the course website on Moodle. So you may take other courses at the college that will use some other kinds of learning management systems like Canvas. This course doesn't use that. It uses a system called Moodle. And you'll run, uh, you'll, you'll log in to Moodler, M-O-O-D-L-E-R, dot northseattle.edu. You'll need to create an account. And in the syllabus, which I will email you, or you can email me for this key, there'll be a course key that you'll need to sign up for the course. Once you do that, you can see all the course materials. The important thing is that there's going to be a weekly content section, which I'll show you in a minute, and the course calendar is another important thing. But as I've mentioned going along here, that a week will typically have labs, quizzes, and a project due. You do your submitting on the website. So the quizzes you're going to take completely on the site. Labs and projects, you're going to upload the file that's going to contain your results. 
Um, and then, so let me do that. And then a note that I'll talk about again is Moodle books. If you see something that looks like a book, it's easy to miss the fact that there are additional pages. So let's look at a typical, uh, at the website and kind of look and see what's going on here. So once you log in, uh, this is a student view. So once you get to the CSC 110, you'll see that there is an introductory section up at the top with uh, some reference materials that you're gonna need. Then under that, you're gonna have weeks that are laid out. So here's the first week of class. Here's the second week. Oh, let's go back to the main course page so it's, yeah, so it's clear. Okay, so here's the first week. Once you click on that week, it's gonna take you to a more detailed view that shows you what's going on for that week including labs, assignments, things like that. The first week has a lot of orientation stuff, so no worries there. Uh, so um, the other thing that I'll point out is uh, the calendar that's on the bottom right. And you'll notice that if you move forward on the calendar and you hover over a date, you'll see some reminders about what's due. So on Friday, October 2nd, the practice quiz is due, etc. So you can hover over dates and see it there. Now, all of these things should be in alignment with what you see in the syllabus. If anything doesn't match, that's an error on my part, and please let me know right away so, uh, so everything, uh, you know, everything works. All right, so let's look at one example here. Let me go to the first week, click on that, and then let's look at an example where we have a Moodle book. See the little icon that looks like a book? Let's uh, center click that so it opens in a new window. The thing I want to point out here is it's very easy to think that if you just read this page, you're done. You get to the bottom and you go, oh, okay, I'm done. Well, no. What you want to look at is over on the right, you'll see that there's a right arrow indicating there are more pages. As long as that right arrow exists, you're not done reading. So you'll notice here I click, I get another page, read that page, click, get another page, etc. You know you're at the end when you see this return this up kind of arrow that means you're done and it'll you're, you're ready to exit the book and go back to the week's contents so that's one important point about these moodle books that you'll want to know in terms of submitting work let's look at an example of that let's say that you wanted to turn in your first lab well if you click on the lab you'll see that it'll give you the instructions here at the top and then it'll let you add a submission once you click on that button it takes you to another page where you can drag and drop a file. So uh, you can literally go to your Windows Explorer and drag a file in here. Um, I'll just drop, drop a random file in here so you can see what it looks like. Uh, that's not a Python program, but you get the idea. And then uh, once you do that, you can say Save Changes, and that submits your work. So that's all you have to do to submit, which is pretty straightforward. And let me go ahead and get back to the course main page. All right, so that gives you a little overview of the course materials in Moodle. Again, if you have any questions or see anything that doesn't match, please let me know and we will uh, you know, fix that right away because it's pretty important that that, that that be the case. Now, this video is getting a little bit long, so I think we're going to cut this one here and then let's take up in the next video with computer programs and then get more specifically into the, the tools that we're going to use and show you an example of writing our first program, which will be a fun part. So thanks for watching this one, and we'll continue in a second orientation video in just a bit. Thanks.